Life, wisdom, psyche truth, massage. Hi, I'm Jen Hillman, and today we're continuing the discussion on Swedish massage versus deep tissue massage. So these two techniques are very similar and are often used together to get the optimal result of relaxation as well as stress relief. So I'm going to demonstrate some techniques for the legs, Swedish and deep tissue techniques. So to begin, we'll use a little bit of oil just to start to soften the skin and generally we would use a Swedish stroke to apply the oil. So using long continuous strokes to evenly apply the oil across the skin. And here I'm using a steady pressure but not too deep. Just enough to really start making contact with the muscles and starting to improve the circulation. And already this feels really good, so you could continue this stroke several times. And it also helps to move fluid that can sometimes collect at the feet and ankles. It helps to just move everything back up towards the heart and towards uh, major lymph nodes that are collected here at the hips. And as you continue the stroke, you can use increasingly more pressure. I'm just distributing that pressure pretty evenly throughout my entire hand. So in my last video, I demonstrated a petrissage technique, which is a way to knead the muscles. That's a great technique to use here on the calves. So you can knead the muscle all the way across, moving up and down the leg. And the most superficial muscle here is the gastrocnemius. That's usually what we refer to as the calf. And it's actually a bipennate muscle, meaning it divides into two individual heads that go out to either side of the knee. So you can continue this petrissage motion, isolating the inside edge of the gastrocnemius. and moving to the outside edge of the gastrocnemius. I also like to use my thumbs as the flat, broad surface that can just glide all the way from the ankle up to the knee. So these Swedish techniques are really helpful in helping you to identify where there might be some knots or some places of tension. It also helps to warm up the tissue so that the body can relax into deeper pressure. So once I'm ready to start working into some of the deep tissue techniques, I'll use my thumb to work a more specific area. And right in this region, I noticed that it's feeling a little bit tight. 
So this will be something different on everyone. So you just really want to use your internal perception to identify where the muscle feels tight. So once I find that tight spot, I can really isolate that area using my thumb or my fingertips. Just applying a steady and firm pressure right into that area where it's tight. And a common misconception about deep tissue massage is that you have to use a lot of pressure and that it hurts and is painful. And while you will sometimes use very firm pressure, there are other times that don't require very much pressure at all. Especially working into the calves and into the legs, oftentimes tight muscles can be very sensitive. So as you start to go in to do this deeper work, it's important that you be sensitive to your partner and make sure that they're not uncomfortable. Because if they're in pain, their body will tense up and resist you. So it's kind of counterproductive if you're trying to get them to relax. So there I was just working one area where I noticed some tightness. And as I mentioned, the calf divides into two separate portions. So you can actually come right down the middle and that will allow you to access what's called the soleus. And it's a muscle that lies underneath the gastrocnemius. just working slowly and gently, being mindful of the pressure that I'm using to allow her body to relax into what can sometimes be a more sensitive area. It's also important that you be very careful and mindful around the knee there are a lot of nerves that gather around the knee, especially at the back of the knee here. So we don't want to apply a lot of pressure at the back of the knee. You can really send somebody flying off a massage table if you're not careful. After working some of those tight spots with the deep tissue work, I like to follow up with a little bit more kneading, a little bit more relaxation by using the Swedish strokes. So again, this is another way to approach petrissage. Just kneading the muscle back and forth. One other thing I like to do is use the forearm on the leg, which can feel like a rolling pin, just rolling out any tightness. It's also great for fleshing toxins. So I just come in with my forearm perpendicular to her leg, and just start to work slowly and gently all the way up to the knee. up on the pressure as I get to her knee and come back to the ankle. And something to note here, I'm not 
relying completely on the bone of my forearm, but I'm actually rolled onto the softer part of my arm, so I can use a firmer pressure without giving her too much from the bone. So it's soft tissue against soft tissue. To end, I always like to give a little foot rub, a little massaging on the soles of the feet. Everybody enjoys a good foot massage, so you can pretty much never go wrong here. Unless your partner's ticklish, then they might not like this part. <laughs> So after working one side, you're ready to move on to the other. So go ahead and favorite this video so you can come back and watch it again and follow along on the other leg. And subscribe to the Psyche Truth channel so you can have a full access to my library where we'll be continuing this discussion of Swedish versus deep tissue techniques for other parts of the body as well. If you'd like to learn more about me and my practice, you can visit my website, jenhillmantherapeutictouch.com. And don't forget to leave me a comment and a thumbs up. Hope you enjoyed this video. Come back and watch again soon. Thanks.